My name's Guy Kesterman. I've been a professional bike and kit tester for over 25 years. And this is my workshop tech talk around on Trex Top Fuel 9.8 XT. A bike that's potentially confusing, certainly not perfect in some aspects, but overall a brilliant all-rounder for trail riders who just like going fast everywhere. So a lot of the confusion comes from the fact that Trek still classify this bike as an XC bike and it still gets that top fuel name, which is, you know, comes from dragsters and the kind of unlimited fuel category at the very top end of performance. And historically, this used to be Trek's fastest full suspension race bike. And it kind of is in a way. I mean, it's still the lightest like full suspension bike they've got, the Super Calibre which has the suspension strut in it built into the top tube, is their lighter pure race bike, but you know, at 60 mil of travel, I wouldn't classify it really as full suspension, half suspension at best. And in this model, although this is changing for the 23 model year, you get a 120 mil SID fork as standard. That is effectively the trail SID with 35 mil legs, but it's still a much lighter fork than the Pike, which they're ranging for 23. And they've continued to do some very interesting things with the shock tune in kinematic that again makes it a really really efficient pedaling bike but when you start looking at the geometry and the rest of the spec this is very clearly more a trail bike for a start you've now got a 66 or a 66.5 degree head tube that's a degree and a half slacker than previously it's 10 mil longer in reach, so a large is 480, medium large is 465, this medium is 450, and you're getting trail rather than XC features on the frame as well. So you've got now internal storage underneath this bottle cage, and well, it's a bit of a squeeze once you put a tube into this supplied sleeve. There's plenty of room in that big broad down tube, Plus, you can see there's internal cable piping in there as well. And it's a nice, big, easy to use catch. Perhaps more weirdly, I don't know if you can see it in there, but it's got two out of three tabs for an IS, for an international standard chain guide mount. So that's definitely more of a trail bike thing needing. I mean, it's not just a top chain mount, which a lot of XC racers use just to keep their chain on for efficiency reasons. This is a full on, you could fit a bash guard underneath everything kind of chain set up. And while this Deluxe Ultimate Shock is set up for, you know, impressive pedaling efficiency, and you've got this little uh, micro adjuster on the top there to add more low speed compression if you want, it's still on a trunnion mount for maximum sensitivity. And once it's pushed past that initial compression, the, com that digressive curve means it falls right away. And it's actually super plush through the mid-stroke with some really good support at the end for pushing hard on trails. And while you do get a magnesium one-piece rocker link to save some weight, and it is, to be fair, for a 120mm bike in this category with internal storage, the claimed frame weight of 2.7 kilos and this overall bike weight of 12.9 kilos without pedals is... You know, it's it's better than most of the categories, certain when you consider that this is a six and a half thousand pound bike rather than the eight thousand, nine thousand pound bikes I was testing from Yeti, Santa Cruz and Pivot recently, which are actually slightly heavier as complete bikes and as frames. So again, it really sits between that XC and trail category, potentially, again, causing confusion. And, you know, big chunky chainstays. I mean, to be fair, a lot of race bikes have big chunky chainstays because racers want that power to go directly through to the rear axle. And this bike certainly does that via this signature ABP, Advanced Braking Pivot, rear concentric axle there. So essentially it is a four bar, but the entire suspension system revolves around that rear, that rear pivot rather than it being a seat stay pivot or a chain stay pivot. And primarily that means that Trek isolate the braking feedback and also interestingly they've actually spec a 160 mil rotor when you typically expect a 180 mil rotor on a trail bike certainly when you start looking at other things like the wheel spec because again these line elite wheels 
carbon fiber rim you'll presume they're going to be a lightweight wheel but line is very much very much Bontrager's trail lineup it's not the x line or the xx light which are their xc wheels so these carbon wheels they're very shallow the 30 mm wide internal but they basically weigh in at two kilos which isn't even light for a carbon trail wheel and again these xr4 tires you've got on here you can see they're definitely more of a kind of trail tread on there rather than certainly a super fast slick race tread like the xr2 or the xr1 but again confusion abounds they actually roll pretty damn well and while they're listed as a 2.4 they actually come up nearer 2.3 even on these broad rims and while the wheels are heavy they've got this super fast rapid drive 108 almost instant connection so together with an anti-squat figure that's almost complete almost exactly consistent throughout the travel i think it varies between about just under 102 and about 100.5 percent so it's got a, almost like a gimbal effect the consistency you get in terms of the connection between your pedaling and the rear end is just so consistent through the bike and through the travel it really really lets you hammer on this bike without any interruption again that works great for racing or for efficient climbing but it also works when you're hammering through rock gardens as you will see from uh, the somewhat unconventional non-stop live ride video i ended up doing on this bike so obviously if you really want to know about the ride then make sure you check out that live ride video uh because it was it was certainly a super fun one i mean to be honest i didn't really know how to summarize this bike in a live ride video but i just set off pedaling and then the fact it didn't want to stop for any reason or any obstacle up or down kind of beautifully summarized what this bike is brilliant at it's just a bike that not only it not only makes hammering the climbs really really rewarding but it can properly thrash the descents and rally pretty much every technical terrain in between or to put it another way it makes type 2 fun genuinely fun but as i said at the start it's not perfect and there are some pros and cons to some features on here the seat tube the fact they use a 34.9 mil in diameter on there now means you get a really good big stout seat post so it feels really firm under you there's no wobble or waggle and it should take loadings really well long term but because of this kink in the seat tube you're restricted to relatively short stroke lengths so this medium only gets 150 mil dropper on there and this knock block system while it's definitely been opened up to 72 degrees so it's very rare that it does interfere with steering I kind of wonder why it's on there anymore because you can see there's a whole ton of clearance even if you remove those spaces out of the system so i guess it's only there if you wanted to run an inverted stem so i guess it gives races the potential and certainly if you switch the wheels out which i have done on it and uh, put lighter faster tires on you could make this into a really quick you know sub 12 kilo marathon bike that would not only be efficient on the climbs and the pedaling pulls but could really make your time back on the descents or you could go the other way spec it up with a pike fork or wait for the 23 version which has a pike fork as standard although that is slightly more expensive that's 7250 rather than 6650 uh, according to the track listings at the moment but you can put more fork in it'll take 130 or 140 mil travel fork without upsetting the frame and there's even space on the rear end there to put a piggyback shock in for some extra control so you could run a super deluxe rather than a deluxe ultimate although to be fair the tuning into this shock is so good and suits this bike so well i'd be very reluctant to play around with that and that tuning because it's so specific to this bike and because it relies on components that you can only get in the deluxe ultimate model means that not only does this mid-level uh, 9.8 bike get it get the ultimate spec shock but so do the alloy bikes and there's a full range of trek top fuels to check from alloy right through to ultra bling uh, xx1 axis or xtr bikes at the top end and while it's not size specific in terms of things like rear chainstay length you do get more sizes in a trek than in most brands so it starts extra small and goes all the way up to xxl but 
goes all the way up to XXXL. But crucially, you get that medium large size in the middle of the range, which I know a whole load of people find is a real sort of Goldilocks in between size that fits them perfectly. Oh, and one thing I haven't talked about, going up to the bars, not only have you got knock block, you've got a nice little Bontrager short stem, you've got wide Bontrager carbon bars, you've got XT shifters and brakes, which were totally trouble free. It was nice to spend some time on Shimano. I've actually ridden this bike a lot over winter, so it's nice to spend some time on Shimano and uh, just remind myself how good that classic original mountain biking group set still is in its current incarnation. And while Sid is tagged as a cross country fork, again, like this bike, remarkably capable when you start heading into the rough stuff, even with this basic charger damper. And I like the fact it's just simple manual low speed compression or lockout on the short on the shock on the fork rather than having a big nest of remote stuff up front. Oh, and talking of cabling, I think a lot of people will be pleased to see that the cables just slide into the front of the frame and then into that internal cable routing rather than going in through the top of the headset. Maybe not as clean aesthetically, but a whole lot easier to work on. And then if you look around the back here, you've got that little mino link on the back of the rocker link there, which lets you slide the seat stay backwards and forwards and that changes the angles by 0.5 degree and the BB height by seven mil. But talking the BB, the good news is we are now back to a threaded BB plus, and there's now clearance for a 30, and while it comes with a 32 tooth ring as standard, there's now clearance for a 36 tooth chain ring if you've got the watts to make that work for you. So again, it's a bike that has real cross country speed potential. So there we go, that's the tech chat through on this Top Fuel 9.8 XT and apologies if it has been a bit kind of disjointed and random in the way I've been talking about stuff, but this whole bike is a bit of a confuser, certainly when you're just looking at the various elements of it, which makes it all the more remarkable how together and sorted it feels when you hit the trails. This is an absolute ripper. If you're the kind of person who turns up to the occasional XC or marathon event, but you're in peaked helmet and baggies, not a skin suit and a roadie helmet, you are going to absolutely love this bike. But also, if you just like shredding trails, but want a bike that's really, really efficient on the climbs, but can properly haul on the descents, then it's great for you too and everybody else between. And hopefully I've brought that across, like I say, on the live road video. So make sure you watch that. But massive thanks to Trek for lending me the bike uh, for a long-term test. It's been nothing but a pleasure to ride. Massive thanks to them for supporting this video as well. Thanks to Giro Cycling, PTs, Torque, Enduro Bearings, Crud XL Fenders and Hebtroco for sponsoring the channel long-term. Always huge thanks to my Patreon subscribers who pledge on a monthly basis and that, that consistent income really helps me justify more time talking to the GoPro about bikes like this. So if you like what I'm doing with the channel and you want early, extended and exclusive edits, including a full non-stop 37 minute live ride review of this bike because it's efficient enough to climb while talking and capable enough to descend without, you know, interrupting my flow of facts. So. It wasn't what I intended to do when I set out filming it, but that's kind of what happened. So I thought, for these Patreon guys, they pay the extra. They can, you know, enjoy a bit more and a bit more in depth and kind of a behind the scenes look at how the whole bike test shtick works. But they also get more comment replies, they get more access and just generally can pick my brains more about various bike aspects that they're interested in. So, if you really like what I'm doing in here, please consider joining my own Patreon. But if you haven't already subscribed yet, please subscribe, that makes a massive difference. Click for notifications so you know when the next video comes out because there are plenty more in the pipe. And give this a thumbs up like so YouTube knows you liked it. But most importantly, tell your mates that there's an old man who's been riding and testing bikes for a hell of a long time and he's talking about them on YouTube because your recommendation means a hell of a lot to me and hopefully it means a lot to your friends as well. But for now, I've been Guy Kesterman on Guy Kest TV. 
talking about the enigma that is the excellent Trek Top Fuel 9.8 XT.